Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and welcome to the start of my Black Author Readathon reading vlog. <laughs> So if you didn't know about the Black Author Readathon, it spans the whole entire month of February and I am so excited. Today is February 1st and I have already completed one book. Um, if you would like to know my TBR or the books that I already picked out to read during this month, um, be sure to go check out my TBR video for February which will be linked down below. I will also be having either another vlog coming out after or before this one talking about all of the books that I read during Thorough Feb which is Fantasy Romance February which is also another month-long readathon that takes place in February um so I'm doing two month-long readathons also all of like the details and the hosts and everything will be linked down below as well if you would like to look into any of that this vlog is going to be just filled of reading updates Normally my vlogs have little slices of life here and there because I really love those kinds of vlogs and I love those kinds of vlogs from other people and I love to make those. But this one takes place the whole entire month of February and I don't <laughs> I don't think y'all want to watch like a three hour long video for me and I don't really want to make a three hour long video. So we're just going to be updating books as whenever I want to. So today is day one and I have already completed one book because I listened to the whole entire audiobook today. Granted I listened on 2.5 times speed so I would listen pretty fast and I believe this book was 12 or 11 hours so cut that down and it's less than six hours and I did a lot of walking on campus today and I had a break before or in between two of my classes so I listened to a bunch of it and I listened to a bunch of it when I got back and while I was working. So so the book that I ended up finishing was A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. I've had this book on so many TBRs, so I definitely wanted to pick this one up as my first audiobook. I have been wanting to read this book for so long. Also, I said in my TBR video that I had never read an Alyssa Cole book before, and that is a total lie, and I don't know why I said that, because I read Let It Shine by Alyssa Cole, and I really, really enjoyed that one, so I don't know why that slipped my brain, but I really liked that book, and so, um, I love this one as well. If you didn't know, this is a royalty romance. I'm going to keep the summaries very short and sweet. If you want to know like detailed summaries of these books, go check out my TBR video. Apparently our heroine is like a long lost princess or like royalty essentially to the kingdom of Thaloso. Yes, Thaloso. Um, and when she was a little girl, she was betrothed to um, Prince Thabiso. Then when she was around four, her parents ended up moving to the United States out of nowhere. Nobody knows why. They haven't come back since. And their country thinks that they abandoned them and that they left them and they basically scorned their family. But it's years, years, years later. Our heroine is grown up. She's a grown woman now. And it turns out that um, her family may or may not have died when she was little. And she has no idea where she comes from at all. And so the book starts out with her getting these, she thinks, fake emails from a prince's assistant telling her that she is like going to be royalty. And she's like, why does this spammer keep targeting me? And But it's real. It's a romance between the prince that she was betrothed to as a kid and her nowadays. I ended up giving this one four stars. I found it really enjoyable. I did not like the secret keeping in here, obviously, by our hero because he pretends to be somebody he's not in here and you figure out why and everything. I honestly also feel like that was one of the main points of the story and like the story wouldn't be what it is if he didn't do that if you know what I mean. Our heroine was really stubborn, but again, it comes with her background and like um, how she's been burned so many times in the past, so I totally understand that. Sometimes it got on my nerves a little bit, then again, that's just her character. That's just who she is. Um, so it's not my favorite romance, but I really did enjoy myself. So I ended up giving it a four out of five stars and I have to write my Goodreads review after I film this clip. Um, I haven't picked out my next book yet, but I really want to read that ebook. I can't f remember what the title of it is. Something about Spark. The, the cover is going to be up here. <laughs> um, I really want to read that one. So I think I'm going to download that on my phone. I still have to do some homework for the day. So I'm going to go do that. And then I will update you when I have read some of that book or even another book. I don't really, I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I also have a different readathon going on at the same time. So I may flip flop between the books that I read. Hey y'all, so I ended up finishing Set by Alexandria House a couple days ago. It's been a couple days. I listened to it basically all in one day <laughs> um, and it was really 
good. I get it. I gave it four stars. I really loved um, how both of our characters were like older. Um, this is also like a really short novella just by the way. It's under 100 pages I'm pretty sure. And our two characters knew each other in high school. They met at a uh, high school reunion and things started up between the two of them. This book is very steamy. Very steamy. If you're not into steamy books I don't recommend this one because <laughs> that's the majority of it. It was just super duper fun. I had a lot of fun reading it and I really want to continue on with the series because I feel like they could just be fun quick reads that you don't really need to dedicate a lot of time for but can still find super enjoyable. I did wish there was more if it was longer there would have been like more like character development when it came to like our heroine and like her children because I was still a little confused with like the family dynamics in in there but it was mainly about the couple in here and we didn't really focus on their different families that wasn't a main part of it. Overall I really enjoyed this one and gave it a four out of five stars. I haven't picked up anything else yet. Um I did end up starting um a book and I just put it down and it was I think it's called Something Wicked, Wicked Wicked Something by Stacey Reed. This is the second book to My Darling Duke which I read a couple weeks ago. I really enjoyed My Darling Duke but it was really hard when it came to the narrator for me because I listened to the audiobook for that book and um the narrator has a beautiful voice but it's also really soft it's just really hard to like concentrate I feel like with this narrator she's an amazing narrator I just don't think that she really helps me concentrate on the the, the book a lot um if that may I don't really know how to describe it um but like I just feel like she's not really my kind of narrator if that makes sense like she's a good narrator like go check it out I don't know something about her voice it's very soft and soft spoken and emphasizes the s's a lot and it's just it kind of like distracts me if that makes sense so i feel like i really want to like physically read that one and so i put that one down because i got it off libby so i returned it so i'm gonna see if that other stacy read book that i had on my tbr also has the same narrator and if it does I don't think I'm gonna pick that one up just because then I don't know why this narrator like distracts me for some reason but um I really want to pick up Be My Spark soon um by Nia Arthurs but I'm currently reading an ebook for the fantasy romance readathon so I'm gonna finish the fantasy romance one and then possibly dive into Be My Spark by Nia Arthurs. Hi y'all so I ended up finishing a book and I am almost halfway through another one um so I ended up finishing a Be My Spark by Nia Arthurs and I ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. This one's on Kindle Unlimited if you want to check it out, but it is the fifth book in a in like a companion series and each book like takes place at this like dating company or like matchmaking company called Make It Marriage. Um, so just for a warning, I was a little bit left out of the loop because I didn't read the first couple books in the series and I felt like I didn't get a lot of the background knowledge and character development. That's one thing that I wish the author would have done, which is given a little bit more background information when it came to certain things. Like there's um, something that happens to our hero's sister, Kate. And I don't know anything that happened. Like did, literally nothing. I don't know what happened to her, but apparently if you like read one of the previous books, which is about his brother, like they talk about Kate's experience and everything, which I didn't read that. So I didn't know. I felt like if she like would have added some things like background knowledge, that would have been way better for me to understand and enjoy. Um, but again, it kind of is my fault though for not reading the previous books in the series before this one. This is book number five. So this book is a, a childhood friends to enemies to lovers story and it is a college romance. Um, I really liked the, the sports part in here because our hero Jonas um, is a college basketball player um, which was really cool. Um, I haven't read a sports romance or college romance in a while so I found that very refreshing and I realized like I need to pick more of those up so that was really nice. And I really liked like the concept of childhood friends to enemies to lovers. I need to find more books like that. I think I've only read two, which is one of these. And then the other one is an, an Immortals After Dark book. And I loved that one. That's like one of my favorites in that series. However, there were certain parts in this book that kind of like took me out of the reading experience, if that makes sense. One thing that I forgot to put in my review that maybe I'll add in later is that some parts of the book are in Jonas's perspective and in our heroine's perspective, even she talks like this, but like he like thinks like somewhat dirty things about our heroine and like you would assume that there would get some pretty steamy scenes in the end and like like you don't you don't we don't even get to read about our characters first time together which i felt like would have been a whole like experience to read about or should have been in the book because they were childhood friends and then enemies and then lovers like we didn't even read about the first time they were together which i felt like would have added so much to the story and also i just like steamy time but like 
felt like that was like something missing like that was a chunk missing from the book and I felt like I feel like if you were to read this too that you might feel the same way I don't know my main other <laughs> I don't want to say great but like element that took me out of the story because I kept like thinking about this all the time instead of like reading the book I just kept getting sucked out and thinking about this was some unrealistic parts of this book so our book starts out with our hero and heroine they were in this art history class they apparently were on a group project together and they were the assigned like partners but they ended up just making a project by themselves instead of working with each other and just turned in the project individually and so the book starts out with like the summer starting and their professor calling them in and being like you have to redo this project you have this amount of time to work on it together or i'm going to fail you in the class or whatever and granted this is the summer by the way class has already ended this was their final project that they were supposed to do and that is that that's not real <laughs> like i am in college i'm a college student i even work for the university that I attend, professors have due dates and they have time constraints. And you cannot get an extension on the final project after grades are already due. Like that does not exist. Like you can't do that. You cannot do that, especially in a college setting. You can't go back and change finalized grades. Like that's not a thing that you can do. And so that just kept bugging me. Cause I was like, that is not a thing. Like a way that I felt like the author could have changed that was just made this like a summer class. And like, they just had to work on a project together over the summer you know i don't i don't know but like you can't change finalized grades like that's not you cannot do that so that peeved me <laughs> that kept taking me out of the story there's this little prologue part the first chapter where they're both like seven years old and they're friends and everything just like the dialogue that the ch children had like i work with kids i worked in a daycare center i was a nanny for seven year olds and so um seven year olds don't talk like that if that makes sense there's this whole section where they like they're in a hospital and they like go to the cafeteria alone together and are hanging out in the hospital by themselves and like that wouldn't be a thing granted i don't know the like town situation in here i grew up in houston texas you do not go anywhere alone under the age of 13 like you cannot go alone anywhere my parents would not or like any sane parent would not let their child go alone anywhere in a in a city like especially like in a hospital like you would not let a seven year old go by themselves to a cafeteria and hospital that they don't go to regularly where you're not watching them. Like the adult is not watching them or somebody's not watching them. Another thing that made me ask like why was like we have this whole issue with like the project situation where they're working on this art history project, right? Not once does the author like talk about the project or she alludes to or doesn't even talk about like what they're writing about or what they're presenting. They're like, oh, we worked on our project today. Here, we talked about our thesis today. This is our thesis. And then she never like says what their thesis is and she never talks about what they're even writing about or what the project is even based off of. I just kept asking myself like, why isn't the author just like saying like one sentence about like, oh, this is an art history project and we focused on Picasso or something like that. Like she wouldn't even like say the actual project. And I just was, wondering the whole time like why i want to know that like i feel like people would want to know that that's me like being kind of like nitpicky just because like sometimes there are those books where something will happen i feel like if it happens in like the first chapter like this one did where something happened where i was like that does not make sense i i i'm nitpicky in that way throughout the rest of the book you'll see i have some reviews on my goodreads where that are way longer and way more in depth than other ones just because something will spark me to um think more critically about a book which i know probably isn't fair for all books because i don't they feel like that or think that way about all the books that i read it mostly just happens for books where i find something super unrealistic that like kind of takes me out of the story like this one with the whole project extension thing that i was like that that does not make sense that doesn't make sense and then it sparks me to unfortunately nitpick other things throughout the story so that happens through a bunch of these more so with like advanced reader copies for some reason that probably is another reason why i don't read arcs all that much because i don't like nitpicking things i don't get joy out of that my brain just automatically thinks this way you know but also just kind of sad that we didn't get that first like couple time together with them like i wanted to read about them like being together for the first time and we didn't get that which was sad because <laughs> i wanted that because i overall really like these characters and i like their backstory and i like their story overall i just felt like certain things just didn't 
fit and maybe could have been uh, written a different way if that makes sense. But I am definitely interested in reading more from this author. Um, I don't know about this series specifically though. I don't know because like I was kind of disappointed with the lack of like steam in it, you know? Since the authors like thought that way, thought pretty steamy about each other, I would assume that the rest of the book would also be steamy, you know? And I just felt like it, it wasn't but also that might just be my expectations getting the best of me you know anyway talking too much about this <laughs> sorry overall i really enjoyed it you you should go check it out if you want to i really like the author's writing style which was pretty short i love the short chapters in here short chapters and books are amazing i loved that go check out this author if you're very interested i ended up also starting and am halfway through almost a sweet talk and lover by tracy Livesay and i started this book on monday and today is thursday and i have forgotten a few things i just haven't also picked it up since monday because i've been haven't had the opportunity to listen to an audio because i am listening to it like through audio form um and so i am planning on listening to it tomorrow and maybe finishing it tomorrow because i have a huge chunk of time where i'm going to be walking around campus and being on campus and all that stuff i don't know it's gonna be freezing in the next couple days it's freezing right now like texas in like or southern texas in like 10 degree weather like are you kidding are you kidding are you joking it's insane anyway so far i'm really enjoying sweet talking lover i'm reading it like a hallmark movie like like i'm watching a hallmark movie which is pretty cool but i feel like it's gonna just be like a steamier version of a hallmark movie which i am super duper excited for um, and i feel like that's what a bunch of my friends said when they like left their reviews on goodreads i am so far really enjoying this one i might need to like rewind a little bit on the audio just because it's been a couple days since i've picked up the audiobook um but i am really enjoying it hey y'all it's been a while since i've updated you so i thought i would update you today's february 22nd i have completed one book since talking to you and i've started two more for this readathon i ended up completing sweet talk and lover by tracy lovesay this was so much fun it was very highly entertaining um this is basically a steamy hallmark movie very 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 fun and i can't wait to read the other book that's out currently the second one specifically and so i can't wait to dive into that one i think it's about our heroine's friend i'm pretty sure i gotta look more into that overall i ended up giving it a four star i loved the couple in here the narrator i will say I did not like her southern accent like I'm from the south and I don't really have that much of an accent because I'm from the urban south you know um but the accent that she had was a little cringy for me at times because I am from the south and I listen to a lot of people with southern accents so that's just a personal preference of mine though the conflict in here wasn't my favorite because everybody saw it coming and like I just not my favorite kind of conflict, but I had a lot of fun reading this one and I found it super enjoyable So I ended up giving this one four stars. Then I started two more books last night I started listening to Duchess by day mistress by night by Stacey Reed. I think that's the title I am listening to this off Libby. I think I'm 25% of the way through the audio. The audio is fairly short It's a different narrator than Stacey Reed's other series Which is good for me because the narrator from the other series was kind of distracting me as I said before uh, so this one is actually a man um, and he's done a great job. I really like him. Um, but so far, it's pretty steamy. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Our hero, um, is like the, is broker man. He like goes and finds out information for people. And instead of getting money from people, he asks for favors. So he's like, I'll go find this information for you if I can cash in a favor from you later. And so our heroine is coming to him needing to find out information. He just wants like her. He wants her, like he wants her. Um, <laughs> so, and she is a uh, widower. No, she's a widow, sorry, a widow. And she has a six year old son. Like her husband was like over 30 years older than her, I wanna say. I think she was 18 and he was 42 when they got married um, and they had a son. She like has never really felt like passion with a man before. And then she meets this man who is very dangerous, very dark. She knows that he's bad news, um, but she can't help but like feel that spark of attraction for the first time ever and it's like intriguing her obviously <laughs> so far really enjoying the audiobook i can't wait to continue and then i also started meeting the huntress by talia hebert uh, this is only like 137 pages and i think i'm like around 30 pages in our hero and heroine just met at the coffee shop um our hero is a werewolf shifter and our heroine is a werewolf huntress he knows that that is his mate he doesn't know that she's a huntress she knows that he's a werewolf and so 
um, he asks her out on a date um, because he wants to like get to know his mate and like introduce himself and get to know her more and she's like going to the state full on knowing that she's gonna try and kill him. <laughs> Um, so I haven't gotten to the date part yet, but a lot of people say that this book is very cute and sweet because a hero admires the fact that she wants to kill him. I think that's what people say about this book. So it sounds very unique, very interesting. So far, I'm really liking this. Talia Hibbert is an amazing writer. I love her so much. Um, so I'm going to continue reading that. Hello, everyone. We are going to be wrapping up this vlog because it is March 1st today. So I thought I'd let you know about all of the books that I ended up completing for this readathon. So this is the end result of my Black Author readathon spread right here. I put my TBR in these little things and then my wrap up is down here. So I ended up reading all but one of the books on my TBR, which I am very proud of. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not get to Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert, but I did end up reading another Talia Hibbert, so I felt like that was okay. First in this readathon, I ended up reading A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. I ended up giving that one four stars. And then I ended up reading Set by Alexandria House, which I also gave four stars. Then I ended up reading Be My Spark by Nia Arthur's which I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Sweet Talk and Lover by Tracy Livesay which I ended up giving 4 stars. Then I ended up reading Made of the Hundreds by Tally Hibbard which I also gave 4 stars. I know I didn't really talk about the last two books on this list all that much um, but you can go check out my Goodreads review. It's been a couple days since I've read these books and my brain's kind of mush right now with all of the other things I am currently doing. So just so you know I really enjoyed Mating the Huntress and thought it was really cute with the sim and roll hero in here um really cute then i ended up completing duchess by day and mistress by night by stacy reed which i also gave four stars to and again i have a whole entire written review on goodreads if you want to know my thoughts on those um it's been a busy couple of days so i wanted to get this vlog out for y'all so i'm hurriedly 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 <laughs> wrapping up this reading vlog for you anyways i had such a fun time reading this and finding some amazing new authors to read from i'm definitely checking out more of alexandria house and tracy livesay i already really loved Alyssa cole stacy reed and talia hibbert neil arthurs is the author that i'm kind of unsure about just because that was the book I liked the least on this list and it just wasn't like my favorite thing in the world, you know? Who knows though, I may give her another shot at some other time. But I definitely want to uh, read more of Stacey Reed because I have loved her books. The book that Duchess by Day, Mistress by Night is centered around, um, the hero has like three younger sisters and I really want to find out if those sisters have their romance stories because like one of them um, is a scarred heroine, one of them is deaf, I believe. All of the sisters seemed like super interesting to me and I really want to know their story so I want to see if they have their own romances. Um, I looked at the book number two in that series and I don't think it was about one of the sisters so I don't know. Let me know if you've read any of uh, Stacey Reed or if you know what I'm talking about when it comes to Stacey Reed. Enough of me rambling. I will end the vlog here. Thank y'all so so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all! <laughs>